Lecture 18. Lyndon Baines Johnson and the Great Society, 63 to 68. This is a complicated one. Lots going on in this one. Uh, we'll see if we can muddle through it. All right. So, let's go. So, Lyndon Baines Johnson. First reason to know him, well, he's president. <laughs> he's also from Texas. All right. He, of course, was the vice president for John F. Kennedy. And when John F. Kennedy was assassinated, Lyndon Johnson becomes president. He was sworn in uh, on Air Force One after it left the old in Dallas. Okay. Some things about uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson. He was, you notice he's in this picture, he's much older than Kennedy was. Okay, He had been you know, uh, in politics a long time. Remember back in the New Deal lecture, there was a picture of him shaking hands with Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Johnson had headed the National Youth Administration in Texas during the New Deal era. And so that's when he's come of age, is during that New Deal. And what else can I tell you about him? Oh, he comes from a position of very, you know, he does not come from a very well-off family, okay? He grew up in poverty, okay? So think about that when you think of uh, Johnson. He grew up with very little, and then came in of an age at the time when the government was dealing with this Great Depression. So Johnson very much has New Deal type ideas. Now, differences, Roosevelt was dealing with an emergency, an economic downturn, a Great Depression. But now the, the United States is in pretty good economic shape, and Johnson sees that the way to, you know, with, with uh, the economy good, why not continue to fight as he wants to fight a war on poverty. Okay? Now, he'd been in Congress, first he was a senator before he was vice president, he'd been in the House of Representatives too. So he'd been in Washington a long time. So he knew how the game was played. You know, he knew how to finagle a deal, to you know, vote with, get someone to vote for you. Okay? He was famous for supposedly cornering, cornering people in hallways. You know, they'd be going down the hallway, and he'd kind of, he's a tall guy, and he'd get them like sealed off and like kind of get them back to the wall and lean against the wall. Well, now I need you to vote with me on this measure. Uh, where do you stand? What is it you need? What did you want done? That kind of thing. So he knows how to get legislation working through uh, Congress. Okay? Now, uh, Kennedy is assassinated in November 63. 64 is an election year, so Johnson only has a year to serve. Okay? So he kind of comes up with this whole let us continue. Let's just continue with the president's uh, you know, programs uh, you know, out of respect for him. And honestly, if you're only going to be in office a year, how much time do you have to really come up with a program per se? Okay? Uh, a couple things do happen though. Uh, one, uh, tax reform bill, get the taxes lowered. Uh, yes, there was a time when Democrats wanted to lower taxes, the theory being that it causes economic growth. But if you have money in your pocket, then you'll go out and spend it. You'll buy widgets, you'll buy cars, or things. Like uh, and so it's supposed to be an economic stimulus. Okay? All right. It's a basic ideological thing here. Is, is you know, Do you think that... Uh, the people can spend the money more efficiently than the government. Okay. Yeah. So that gets through in 64. But the big thing, the big deal, the one you need to know about, the one that would be guaranteed to be on the end of course test if you were having to do it, would be the Civil Rights Act of the 1964. Okay, so let's talk about this thing. So the Civil Rights Act, the Kennedy administration had been working on this. Now remember, everything has to go through Congress, which the president can advocate or you know, get friendly congressmen to work on stuff. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 is the most important Civil Rights Act of them all. Okay? Basically what it says, um, and I'm sure the book will probably explain it in a little more detail, I'm going to just kind of sum it up in a paraphrase, is this. If you have a, a public accommodation, you have to serve the public. Okay. Uh, you know, if you open a restaurant, you've agreed that you're going to serve the public. Okay? That means white, black, green, red, 
plaid, whoever walks in the door. Okay? Otherwise, you're not really accommodating the public. Uh, and so the Civil Rights Act basically outlaws discrimination in private businesses. Okay, the government, of course, sees the, the 14th Amendment guaranteed that governments were supposed to give equal protection. You know, the government was supposed to you know, discriminate between races. Now, we all know that uh, some of this was going on, particularly uh, at the state level. Okay? So the Civil Rights Act is a big game changer. Okay? No more... No more Jim Crow laws. Uh, uh, no more, you know, whites only waiting rooms. No more colored drinking fountains. That kind of stuff. It's all going to have to go away. Now, of course, there'll be resistance to this, and you can't just dismantle this overnight. But it's been being dismantled kind of since Brown versus Board of Education back in '54. So this is like uh, the big kind of accumulation of the uh, civil rights uh, movement. Almost. There's one more big, big thing coming here. Okay? So that's the Civil Rights Act of 64. Uh, I told you Johnson would like to wage a war on poverty. They do pass an Economic Opportunity Act in 64. Now, this is a little bit uh, ahead of the Great Society thing, but it's like a starting of it. One example of this was a job corps. This was a program by which, you know, youth could go and it's to learn job skills by working maybe in an inner city area. It's, it's designed for maybe help people who are low economic status okay, to learn some job skills. So the Job Corps is created. Uh, it's just kind of a prelude of things to come. Because, of course, 1964 will be an election year. Okay? Uh, and so Johnson, who you know, liked wanted to be president anyway, uh, we'll run for election 64, and so we'll talk about that here in a minute. All right. Oh, picture of uh, OBJ making a point. All right. All right. I forgot these slides. LBJ signing the Civil Rights Act. All right. There we go. Election. Election of 1964. Johnson is going to run against his Republican opponent is a guy named Barry Goldwater. All right. Some things about Barry Goldwater. He's from the right wing of the Republican Party. So you know, there's a more liberal ring, wing, there's a more conservative wing. Barry Goldwater is very, very conservative. He's managed to get the nomination. Okay. All right. I don't know who is running against him. I've never really studied it really deeply, but uh, the only important matters is who's running, right? And that's Barry Goldwater. Very conservative. He thinks the government spends too much money, that there's too much taxing, that there's too much getting into control in people's lives. He would be very much an anti-New Dealer. Okay? Uh, Goldwater, he's a senator from Arizona, by the way. Uh, he's also kind of a hawk on foreign policy. He doesn't want to screw around with the Soviets. Okay? He doesn't really have any... Uh, uh, he, he's not a, adverse to using military force if necessary. Okay? Uh, which will be a lead into something we'll be getting to here in a minute. Because remember, we're still in this Cold War. All right. Now, Goldwater had also voted against the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Now, from what I understand, and I, Goldwater wrote a book called Conscience of a Conservative. I'd like to read it one of these days. Uh, I never have. Uh, but my understanding on Goldwater is that he didn't vote against the Civil Rights Act of 1964 because he was a racist, he just felt that it was a free country. And that means you're free to be a jerk and want to be. If you want to open a restaurant and say, hey, I only serve you know, Catholics, or I only serve Jews, or I don't serve blacks, or I only serve whites, or I only serve blacks, you know, that, that, that should be your right. You know, there's, people have property rights, they have the right to do what they want, as long as they're not hurting other people, right? And so I, I believe that he voted against the Civil Rights Act of 1964 on just purely ideological grounds. Okay? That the government just didn't need to be telling people what to do any more than necessary. It's all part of being a kind of a, you know, it's almost like a libertarian mindset. Okay? Now, uh, Goldwater is, uh, by the way, if you're, you might be driving down the street and you might see a car with a bumper sticker. And 
Anybody taking chemistry? If not, you can look it up. All right. So, gold water, gold water, gold water. If you, if you got some time, Google, look this up on the internet, Google LBJ or LBJ Daisy ad, 1964. All right. I'm not going to try to figure out how to embed it into this thing. I just, it's just not going to go there. Just Google it. Google it. Entertain yourself. Johnson Daisy ad, 1964. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, the Johnson saying that Goldwater is going to get us into a war with his hawkish, you know, uh, outlooks. Right? Let's get to the election map here. Oh, there you go. In your heart, you know he's right. Because he's right wing, right? Mm -hmm. Check this out. <sighs> Johnson's in red. This is one of the great all-time electoral bloodbaths. Okay? 90% of the vote goes to Johnson. 61% uh, uh, of the popular vote, 90% of the electoral college. Okay. Well, Goldwater carries Arizona. Okay, it's his home state. He's from Arizona. But wait, what's weird here? What do we see? That's wacky. Goldwater is one. The South, or bits of the South. The solid South that always votes Democratic and have her vote in Republican. Some of them. Of course, Johnson's going to carry Texas. He's from Texas. What's up with that? Well, remember Goldwater voted against the Civil Rights Act of 64, which Johnson had pushed. He pushed to get it through Congress, okay? partially to honor Kennedy and partially because he believed in it. Okay? He would supposedly call Republican congressmen who probably don't want to vote for Democratic uh, initiative, say, well, well, are you the party of Lincoln or not? Well, well yeah, Mr. John, Mr. President, we are the, uh, the anti-slavery party, remember? Uh, yeah, we'll have to vote for this. So, but, but Goldwater did. And so I think a lot of Southerners voted for Goldwater uh, because he had this concept that the government needed to stay out of things, okay? which doesn't necessarily make Goldwater a racist, but a lot of racists probably voted for Goldwater, all right, because they wanted the government staying out of things. Yeah? And the point here is that it's you see this breaking up finally after almost 100 years of the solid South. Because you know, once you vote for Republican one time, maybe next time it's easier. Okay, all right. So Goldwater goes down in defeat, uh, and Johnson wins a big one. Now I'm going to talk about some significance of this in a second. But we're coming up near the, the hard break. I've had trouble with these things going past when they're supposed to. So I'll stop early, come back, and finish up this Goldwater thing.